Graphs of absolute value functions, they're pretty easy. Basically, what's weird is, you know, in your history, you've graphed lines, which basically look like this. You've graphed parabolas, probably, which look like this. Maybe you've done, like, some root functions, which look kind of weird like this. But the cool thing about absolute value functions is they make a perfect, beautiful, in my estimation, uh, V. So if you graphed this right here, it would essentially look just like this, which makes sense. If I plugged in 2, I would get into there. Absolute value of 2 is up 2. It would be somewhere over there. But if I plugged in negative 2, it still comes out to a positive 2. So you get this V. From there, the problem is, is you might have one question that says graph y equals absolute value of x. And then everything after that becomes more difficult. So this is how you decide what happens to that graph. There's a bunch of transformations that can happen to the original graph. And it has to do with this kind of parent formula that is y equals a, x minus h plus k. You know, hopefully you're like, that makes no sense, Ryan. I don't even know what you're talking about. These letters all do stuff, right? So k is the easiest. Anytime you add a <laughs> number outside of the absolute values, it changes it vertically. If this was a plus 3, the v would go up 3. If this was a minus 3, the v would go down 3. It would just shift that v up and down. So that's vertical. This is side-to-side -side transformations. And this is annoying because it's, it's already a minus, right? And so when you start messing with h, if you said, like, for instance, y equals uh, x minus 2 plus 5, well, that's really e And by the way, a in this case would just be 1. So let's ignore a. This would be easy. You'd say, that's definitely up 5. Ryan told me that's up 5. This looks like maybe it goes left 2. It does not. Remember, the original formula already had a minus in it. So this is actually right 2, up 5. So your v would start 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, and it would be like that, with no difference in the v-ness because a, we'll talk about in a second, was just 1. So this is a little counterintuitive. The outside's easy, up 5, down, whatever. But the inside, don't forget the sign is opposite. Another example really quick about the inside. So let's say they said y equals x plus 5 minus 1. <laughs> the easiest? It goes down 1. I totally get it. This goes down 1. Ryan explained that. The inside, again, is trippy. This is not right 5. You're looking at it, oh, plus 5, that's easy. It's right 5. It's not right 5. Remember, the formula had a minus, so this is technically x minus negative 5 if you want to get all mathy about it, right? x plus 5 would be to the left 5. So don't get messed up on the whole inside being opposite thing, and the outside is not opposite. Okay, now A. A affects the steepness of the V or the direction. So example, again, Here's your generic v, right? If you add y equals like, you know, x plus 1 minus 1, you'd say that goes down 1 and it goes left 1. All right, so down 1, left 1, here's my v. The minute you add an a in front of that, you start messing with how steep it is, okay? If a was a big number, like 5, it would make this more steep. It closes it. It makes it more steep by a factor of 5. If you made this little guy, there's no way I can erase this without messing up the whole thing. Let's just pinpoint erasing. Oh, okay. Okay. If you made this one half, because that's a small number for A, it would open it wider. So if this is your original, now one half might be wider like that. So be careful of A. And now the other thing that you probably assume because of your past experience with parabolas is if you make A negative, so again, you have something generic like y equals whatever, x plus 2 minus 3. The minute you put a negative in front of that, a negative 1 or a negative 5, any negative, the whole thing used to be a v, and now it flips and it's upside down. A negative a flips your v upside down. So that's it. So they might ask you questions like, let me just give you a little quiz. I'm just going to give you a little quiz right now on the spot. What if I said, uh, give me an equation for an absolute value function if it goes right, like, I don't know, 3, and down, whatever, 7. You would put your little generic thing right here, put like this, and you go, hmm, okay, so it goes right 3. That's definitely going to be minus 3, which is, again, is counterintuitive. That looks like it's left 3. It's not. That's correct. Right 3, and down 1, minus 7, I'm done. Steepness was not messed with. 
it wasn't flipped upside down, so this is totally correct, okay? Uh, let me give one more. So this is my last sample. This is your last freebie, okay? They might give you a function and say, what transformation happened to it from the parent? So you have, if the parent was just normal, right? Okay, there's your like normal one. And then they said, now you have f of x equals negative 2x, let me just change that, minus 1, and then plus 3. Three things are going on. You have this little sucker, this little sucker, and this little sucker. The easiest one by far is the vertical. Okay, I know it went up 3. That's a no-brainer, okay? That's up 3. What does this little guy mean? Does it mean moves left 1, wrong, incorrect, you in the back? This actually goes right one, because remember, it's always opposite. So that's right one, and what does this do? First of all, it flips it, so I know the negative flips it downward, okay? And also, does it get steeper or less steep? Is two a big number, is it bigger than one, or is it less than one? Because two is bigger than one, I'll call that like relatively a big number compared to one, so it gets more narrow or more steeper. So it would flip down, and it would get a little steeper. So that's it. That's how you deal with absolute value functions. And, and really, the transformations make sense once you start graphing them time after time. You can do these transformations without tables, which is what I'm recommending. Uh, and again, if you're having a hard time at your local high school, you can take this online at Silicon Valley High School, uh, pass it there, and the credits will be transferred back to your school.